Which? I was speaking of close combat. Our playthroughs mm. mirror each other in a very bizarre way where you're doing completely different nonsense, but your playthrough going easier than mine is a good example of one, you increase your level, and two, knowing what her team was like and some other basic ideas, you were able to approach her team differently than I was. And my ideas were good, it's just because her- part of the <laughs> problem in your high theory, because it was fighting, we assumed, oh, because it's fighting, most of her team has to have a dark move. No, it's only like two of them, I think. Well, that, and I was like, ten levels under! Yes. I, that was my problem. I was like, ten levels under. I mm. needed to set up a Gyarados with Dragon Dance. I planned uh, to, in playing um, Scarlet on my own, I wanted to use a Gallade and to see how Gallade would handle in that was Gallade being psychic. So I was like, Gallade should be able to somewhat easily sweep through there, especially when I... Uh, oh, they're good. No, because we were talking about it. If you're going to use a Gorgonacle and you're not using sturdy to cheese a few things and sturdy is just recommended even in a casual playthrough just because knowing you can survive one hit mm. is debatably more important than um very specific status like immunity from like raw status effects yeah. but yeah because surviving a hit can be super good. We've shown off why. But if you're going to use a Garganacle and you don't want Sturdy, the status immunity isn't bad. But in a casual playthrough, I just think... Or because you can get the Covert Cloak, you could do uh, Sturdy was like the Covert Cloak. To so avoid that... the statuses of secondary effect type status. Meaning like in that scenario, I actually would not... Would have... have Avoided the burn and shit, yes. Mm. Or you could run Purifying Soul to avoid more direct statuses. But Sturdy's just recommended a casual mm. playthrough. Well, Sturdy's more recommended for the cheese strap, but I thought if I'm going to do that anyway, mm. I might as Sturdy is recommended in a casual playthrough, even outside of the cheese strat, just for, like, the survivability, because surviving a hit that should otherwise kill you can let you, um, do ridiculous setup cheese. Yes. Because we've done, in, like, like... a scenario like that, say you had the, like, sturdy, you get hit by a move, you get knocked down to the sturdy, you set up the iron defense, it would be like, oh no, this iron defense is useless because I set up, because uh, I set it up and I'm slow, but you're in single player, you could just throw a full restore at it. You can cheat with items. Yes. Sturdy's good for that reason. I fucking love you, Garganagle. <laughs> they went and did it. They made an actual good rock type. How fitting is it that the actual good rock type is literal salt? This is the, like, one of the few good rock types, and that is a small list. Yes. I would also argue what's that's the, a sm uh, what's the name of the that's a list so small you could count it on a single hand and still have three unaccounted uh, four fingers. Gigalith, that's the one. I would also argue that in a more modern sense, Gigalith is actually a great rock type. Now this is coming with a caveat that I hate physical attacking rock types because no physical attacking rock move is. Good, unless there's a gimmick behind it. Again, mm. see, Garganacle. At the same time, I kind of, uh, at the same time, I kind of wish Salt Cure was stronger. If it was stronger? Oh, if it was stronger, it'd be hideously broken. It is hideously broken. You mean it'd be more hideously broken? Yes. The one consistent on Garganacle that has now shifted where the competitive landscape of, like, Actual competitive 
has changed and no one runs the Iron Defense Body Press set on Garganagle anymore. But the one thing that is a constant change, I mean, the one constant, consistent thing that doesn't change, Garganagle always runs Salt Cure. People stop running the Body Press set as commonly. Of course they did. They did the thing that I said was a good idea that people said was dumb until everyone realized it was a good idea and that the, makes me hate competitive players a little bit because people essentially made fun of me and I don't want to be an asshole but I always hate when I suggest something and people will kind of give me this Oh, you're just a small, like, YouTube channel. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And everyone kind of has this obnoxious mindset that if your idea hasn't been done by a high-level competitive player, your idea must have zero value, then a high-level competitive player literally does the exact idea you said was good. And then all of a sudden, everyone acts like, Oh, mm, if you're not doing this, you're an idiot. And that idea is the fact that Garganacle gets wide guard. People realize wide guard is good at blocking spread damage and that there was some common spread damage because make it rain is spread damage for God knows what reason. Because that move needed to be more broken. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I also absolutely love uh, how its English name is Make It Rain. Why do you try to learn stolen ads like three times? So, my, my point. Garganagle has started being a wide guard support Pokemon a lot more often, and I said that was a good idea, and I got made fun of, but then... Once a few high-level competitive players made Garganacle literally a wide guard support Pokemon, everyone suddenly acted like that was the best idea ever and that you're an idiot for not doing that. I'm like, did I not say that like three months ago? Stupid. And because I've shown your playthrough, uh, the, like, the... Arvin and shit jumps basically another like, you know, five levels and have to basically get them all to around like, uh, a level, um, like 58 or so. Cause he had a small- I could do 55, uh, but because of everything else, I want to actually get them all close to level 60. Seems why, you know, I'm just sitting here doing this. The end game in this game is fucking stupid. Because the level jumps. Oh, hey, Psycho Cut. That would have been useful like five minutes ago. I honestly am kind of okay with this uh, move set. Your move set is good for radically different reasons. Because it's the one niche time you get to use a wide lens and basically burn things and shut down physical attack. Uh, speaking of... Dollar dollar bills, y'all! Ching, cha ching, cha ching! Make it, make it rain, son! <laughs> make it rain! <laughs> oh! Because, yes, that is the actual English name. The Japanese name is, I believe, Gold Rush. Time for a golden shower! Money makes the world go round. None of you get this fucking reference. I mean, my mind. It's all about the money, money, money. It's all about the money, money, money. It's all about the... To change. <laughs> Make it rain. Because <laughs> it's firing coins, but the English translation yeah. is Make it rain. <laughs> oh. Goldango, I love you. Everyone loves the cheese head. Mm -hmm. That is kind of the greatest Pokemon known to man. Hey, it's only 
need to take like all, all my damn candy. Oh, come on. Hydro pump, why? Fifty-six and fifty-seven is fine enough. Probably going to. Uh... Okay, you're going. Okay, I'm going to probably give all like. Give everyone one, one large, uh, and then some. Oh, I actually, wait, no, I need to get uh, him to 57 first. And that, I also got it down to 10. Okay. Now everyone gets one large. This is right in the ring. <laughs> yeah. Right in the reins to be, yeah. That's why I, this is why I was doing my own grinding and we're going to return to my playthrough and I'm going to have sort of similar levels before <laughs> beating everything. Because the level jump in this game for the end game is kind of fucking obnoxious. And I've watched other people play this game, and I've watched other people not even do- Oh, yeah, which also reminds me of the other thing. And this confirmed something where it, it was a stream of someone doing a Professor Oak challenge. And them and their chat basically confirmed- why are you the only one that can get close combat? Basically, a guy in his chat confirmed that you get more experience the more, like, badges and crap you have. But I have, like, all the badges and shit. How I, like, I'm confused how to not get more experience out of the, like, out of the fighting, like... Because... When you get, like, basically damn near all the badges, you're getting roughly the equivalent of, sort of, average Pokemon experience. Mm. So, and that explains a lot, honestly. It's so what would then mean if, at the end, you get the, uh, what was normally the average, that does mean they did kneecap it, then. It's kneecapped through most of the game mm. to kind of keep you from... Abusing Pokemon to level grind. <laughs> or if you have an idiot savant through a high level, like, um, part of the story or a raid or some shit. <laughs> well, okay, raids, so I'll give you experience. It's, it was to keep you from literally sort of doing what he was doing, where, like, to try to grind for that Professor Oak challenge, he found a bunch of Chansey and had. And he did something funny, which is one of my favorite dumb things to do in Pokemon. Why? Why? Because he found a bunch of Chansey, did he end up getting a bunch of Lucky Eggs? No. No. The Chansey were so high level that they couldn't hit Ghost types. Yeah. So. One of. So, a Chansey that by all accounts. Should have been able to do something because it was. I'm sure you see where I'm going with this, but Chansey. It was basically <laughs> what I did to get the like teapots from the yeah. Sanesty of they were so high level they lost the like moves that were causing me problems. Yes. It only had like ghost and like grass damage. Basically. So, the point, and him and his chat realized he wasn't earning experience correctly, mm. and then figured out that this game actually sort of kneecaps your experience until you basically have, like, all the badges. 
the more badges you get, the more experience you get, and the experience growth is supposed to roll. And I have to ask at that point, why, why didn't you, like, keep the black and white experience system of the, like, if you beat something in a higher level. So basically, you're... no one that plays through this game can ever play through this game in a way to be even remotely close to in-game levels without having to pad out with arbitrary raid grinding. Mm. Nobody can fucking play this game and get good level ups, no matter how you play, unless you are constantly doing raids. I have not seen anyone play this game in a natural way that gets the level curve to fucking function. Mm. You, I'm sorry, it cannot be done. If damn near everyone ends up needing to grind. And I'm sorry, that is stupid. Grinding is just padding and artificial difficulty. The only P, there's only one type of person that doesn't need to grind, and that's the type of person that literally throughout the entire game, every other, like... Every five or ten minutes, constantly pops in on a raid and constantly gets experience candy. Or you constantly pick up the items off the ground that are the sparkling and you get some god tier RNG constantly getting large candies out of that. But at that point, you would need like nearly every item you pick up to be a large. And you're not My getting point that is, level of RNG. Further exploring of just other playthroughs and streams and stuff... Nobody at the end game is anywhere close to the level they should be. Everyone ends up in a good, um, like, 10, 15 plus levels lower. For some people, like, it can be even, especially people that were constantly kind of changing up their teams, it can be, um, as low as, like, 2025 20, level difference because the end of this game is fucking stupid. You're battling with my boss, I, I do love how they have a dialogue option about that. Yes. Also, I said I love how this thing goes from looking like the most precious boy ever. To, oh, wait, it's a, it's a dark type and it's based off a of mob boss. Mm hmm. Anyway, I have to ask, like, why did you need half the experience system? You could have kept the old system. Because they literally had to kneecap to make an open world Pokemon game function, where even the black and white system would have... I believe this thing can have a crunch, but that's why I'm trying to burn it. Because Greedent is slow a... Oh, Greedent is incredibly slow. So... White lens. I believe his has crunch or stomping tantrum, so if it clicked one of those, that's gonna do dick amounts of damage. Oh no, it's earthquake. But the point is, it did dick amounts of damage. Burn, burn cuts physical damage in half. And that was non stab earthquake. So because that was non stab earthquake, instead of 100 power, it's 50. It is a hundred, but it's one hundred because of the super effective. Okay. Instead of one fifty. You know what the fucking no. damn it, Garzin, You know what I mean. Fuck. Hey, fat ass. That HP sap. But that's good because look at all that drain. We got to show off the dumb combination of why burnt. This is why I care about stats. Kurzenu Greedent's physical attack is a good bit better than the special. Yeah, Garganackle. It is time. The prodigal son is here. Okay, if we're keeping up the joke, what we call the prodigal son was the low kicks. And a fucking course. Oh good, the game's big dumb.
Why? There they go. God damn it, game. Fine, I'll do it all. Didn't even need the setup. <laughs> it was because it was slightly higher level. level. I wasn't sure if I. Skull villain. It's a grass fire type. I'm going to take some amount of damage from Stealth Rock. It's not just Grass Fire. Remember, it's other moves are able to uh, leave Zen Headbutt, and then I think it does have Crunch. I can't burn it, it but a wall, I can't burn it. Bitter Blade uh, will do neutral. That's pretty decent damage. I'll get a big heal. This is why, again, this is why I love draining moves. Yep, there's yep. Crunch. But because of the heal, we live and slap again. Fire types cannot be burned. In case anyone was confused by that we can't burn it thing. Fire types have a natural burn immunity, so... Toad Scroll. Grass types cannot be hit by powder moves. It's uh, it w grass and ground, so I could have used the uh, like ice spanner on the uh, floatzel, especially uh, because you know I would be faster than this thing. But I'm afraid of like spore and shit, so. Because the Massilian uh, might... My ignores abilities, not grass immunity. Oh, of course you fucking do. So then, I guess at this point... 23 skidoo! We can too! <laughs> I love your turn. That's a good example of... Ah, uh, yeah. Cloyster. Hyper Potion now. We have good physical defense, and I don't remember this thing having a dark move. Yeah, liquidation. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Good enough where if it does that again, I can live one more of those, and I am faster, so. And a fucking course you do, god damn it. Except it's. You're under a drop. It's under a drop! Make it range ridiculous. Yeah. Special defense is awful. You dropped. And make it rain is fucking stupid. Because that was still stab. Because light screen would have only, like, and there was no ball stuff. It doesn't have, like, ground or fighting. I though. don't think. <laughs> well, we're gonna uh, assume. Okay, we're... well, you're. you're... Okay. God damn it, hold on. I'm trying to say something. You can iron defense because you going. have sturdy. That's what I was going. Uh, and stealth. intimidate. Uh, stealth rocks. Oh wait. Yeah, yeah rocks are up. I don't think you can still iron defense, and I'm pretty sure you'll live. Whatever. And body press, since it's using your defense stat, body press gets around intimidate. I think he just comes at you with some decent dark damage. I feel like this thing had a grass move. Though I, like, because of the good physical, like, really good physical defense, I still should be able to live that. Oh, no, crunch. Yeah, doesn't have a grass move. I thought I had seed ball for a minute, but I think they're greeting it. 
did like 20 damage. And that's with the uh, Terra Dark. This is a rock wall. And now you take even less freaking damage. You you also naturally have recover. It's just it's the priority. I know. I could risk the recover. You should. Eh, eh, eh. Eh, save me that, I guess. It's more. No, I don't. Thing is, if you can get your iron defenses going, because he's dark, just body press. Because that, that should do fucking all now. <laughs> Stepping through the grand tour, bitch. And you can just set up mm. for a guaranteed kill. Just set up again. Game has to go neutral. And then you can start getting in that comfortable range to use yeah. your own recover. Yeah, I'm at plus four now, so because I'm at plus four, I could actually recover now. Damage. Should do nothing. Leftovers, take you up. If you need it, and you just hit recover, which is 50%, you were over it. You just iron defense one more time. You're back at full, so even a crit shouldn't kill you. This thing is the goat. And then you're just literally- I, I- holy shit, I have genuinely never loved a rock type as much. And now you body press. Of oh, fucking course it does. Use the- So it was plus fucking five! Yeah. And you press that boy to death. Mm -hmm. Press. You just body press. Intimidate doesn't matter. Because that was using your defense stat to deal physical damage. Burn matters, but intimidate didn't. And because you were higher level, you had an easier time than I did. I had to overcome this with a small... And again, I also re remembered like the moves thing. Oh, I couldn't remember everything. Okay, I went in, went in here. Oh. I went in here a little bit under leveled. You increased to be about his level, and then the Mavostiv, as a good example, you literally just took a rock type. Mm. The, the cynic in me? Because, and I know I can sound obnoxious, and I don't like coming off this way, but the Mabostiff was a physical attacker, and Carson used a rock type known for physical defense and set up iron defense, increasing his physical defense. And the physical defense increase meant the physical attacker did less damage. It's time for the question of the day and my overall thoughts on the topic. So, anyway, what is your opinion on Arvin's team. Overall, other than the level jump, I don't think his team is that bad. His team is well-rounded, but I don't think his team is inherently that overpowered. My entire problem with his team is the massive level jump that his team has. When compared to other things in the game, if the level scaling had been better, I actually think Arvin's team would have been an overall decent challenge without being obnoxious. But again, the entire problem is the massive jump in levels that his team has. Anyway, you can leave your thoughts, opinions, and answers in the comments, or 
you can leave them on social media or of my social media links as well as my discord links are in the video description now as always i need to be a shill for a minute if you subscribe to the channel and if you follow me on social media that really helps our communities grow but anyway i hope you all enjoyed the video and i hope i will see you all next time so as always good morning good afternoon good evening or good night everybody I hope you'll come back someday. See you later.